Joining us is Reagan economic advisor Art Laffer. Mr. Laffer, do you agree? Uh, I do agree. I mean, that if we had that growth like that, that would be a terrible situation. And I think the debt problem would just keep accelerating. But I almost left the studio, Dagan. I mean, from here, when you told me Steve Forbes was going to be really hard on me, he's one of my best friends. How can he be hard on me? Well, yeah, Steve, well, I, I, I have at it, Steve. I, I, yeah, I had explained to them that we worship each other. So, uh, I do. I'm not going to get many you. sparks here. No, I'm going to find some spark. I'm going to find okay. a point of disagreement. Is it? Is it? A, well, let me ask you this. So, in terms, of, Steve wants more tax cuts. He wants tax cuts on capital gains. He wants a lower individual. He wants lower individual rates. Let's start by making the individual tax cuts permanent. How would that not at least impact the uh, debt and deficit, Art? Well, I, I think if Steve got his way, it would impact the deficit dramatically. I think it would lower the deficit over the next 10 years, and I think we'd get faster economic growth. You know, really seriously, Dagan, you, you cannot balance the budgets on the backs of the unemployed and people who lo lose your jurisdiction. You just can't do that. So you need economic growth to bring that de deficit down. And that I think that's the whole thing of the previous person saying how the debt was going to increase because of slow growth. And we need to get this economy growing. And then we need to control spending. I mean, there is no way of doing this without growth and controlling spending. And there's no better way to control spending than during a, a rapid expansion. I mean, you can cut government spending when people are got good, high-paying jobs. You can't do it when they're unemployed and trying to raise kids with very low incomes. Uh, Art, has there ever one ever been a time that this country's balanced a budget when we haven't had big growth? And number two, no. the, in terms of the entitlements, this is like softball city here. No, the, oh, this, this, this is enlightenment. <laughs> this is education for people who don't get it, which includes oh, yeah. most of Washington. So, yeah. uh, uh, so without a boom, you don't get the deficit under control. Yeah, we had two periods when we had surpluses in the last 60 plus years. Number one was under after John F. Kennedy. We had the Kennedy tax cuts, the go go 60s, and we moved into surplus there with huge tax cuts, rapid economic growth, exactly the formula you and I talk about, Steve. And then we had another surplus with Bill Clinton, whom I voted for twice. Uh, we had the enormous economic growth under Bill Clinton. He cut taxes dramatically, except for the highest rate, but he cut all the others dramatically. We had great growth, and again, we had a surplus. Look at the bad periods. Look at 1974, Nixon. I mean, we had terrible growth. The economy tanked. The stock market fell, and the deficit increased enormously. And look what happened under W. and Obama when we had the Great Recession. The debt just, the deficit just went through the ceiling with slow growth in the crash. So you need prosperity to balance the budget. When, you when, also when, need spending when, restraint as well. All right, I, let me, allow me to introduce you to Robert Wolf, who I was know, a, a, well, okay, I know Robert I know. very I'm well. I'm having lunch with him coming up. Okay. Yes, well, you then, are. Well, so Art, now Robert's okay. worried. He was an no, economic no. advisor to President Obama. No, now no, he's all worried about all. the debt. She, now he, the, the way, sky is falling. By the way, neutral here. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, I was on the panel with Steve and Larry Kudlow and, and Art and Steve Moore, and I think it was four against one, so it was even. So it's no. kind of like here. <laughs> I right, obviously incredible respect for you. I'm a, as you know, I'm a Reagan Democrat starting Wall Street at Solomon too, in the I, 80s. Me so too I'm right there with you. Bob. But my question is, and, and, and is w there's a whole group retouting the whole idea of supply side economics, which I, I, act, I question now. I loved it in the 80s, and I wish we continued it going forward. But totally different back then. We're talking about north of 50 percent tax cuts, different rates at the time. We didn't have globalization. I think it's just interesting for you to explain because you were one of the, you know, really the, the thought leaders in that at that time, you, Steve, and others. What? Explain why supply side economics is very different today and this tax cut is very different today and, and fiscal discipline is very different today. I, I would love to just hear your views on why it's different than the 80s. You know, I think I would agree with you, Robert, almost completely, because the tax cut that uh, that Trump just had, I thought, was perfect for the time, for the place. 
But now it's time to do a big tax reform, yeah. which would be very much like the 1986 tax bill. I want to do what Steve Forbes says is drop those tax rates down on capital gains, drop them down on personal income, drop them further on corporate, but then get rid of the deductions, exemptions, exclusions, and do what Reagan did, which made it revenue neutral, static revenue neutral, but with much lower rates, many fewer tax brackets. We went from 14 brackets down to two brackets. We dropped the highest personal income tax rate to 28 percent. We dropped the corporate rate from 46 to 34. We went, I mean, it was just amazing. We got rid of all these loopholes, tax dodges and all that. And it led to a huge era of prosperity for both Democrats and Republicans. And by the way, I mean, well, that, of course Steve, it is. Yes, it is. Do you think it's going to happen, though? Yes, of course it will. It just doesn't <laughs> seem it right now, but it's always darkest just before dawn, Robert, and it's going to happen, and it's going to be done by the Democrats as well as Republicans. It's going to be bipartisan, but just Steve, the way it was in 86. Steve, uh, I, could music the, to my ears. Could conservatives actually be conservative, Steve, and not spend so much money? And actually be and actually be about cutting spending because the ones in Washington are not. Uh, well, uh, the, the the spending bill. The re reason we got it was because the recognition by Republicans we needed to rebuild our tattered military. And with the not 60 votes in the Senate under current rules, uh, they had no choice but to swallow this other junk. But in terms of uh, controlling spending, obviously it focuses on entitlements. One, when you have more government revenue, and Art can walk you through this, uh, that lowers the unfunded liabilities. But also, if you get more free markets in health care, that drastically lowers it. And if you get personal accounts for young people, that's going to take care of Social Security. As Art has always pointed out in the past, there are two ways to deal with entitlements. One is the root canal with that anesthesia, like raising the retirement age to 85 and shooting everyone in Medicare above the age of 75. <laughs> but there are positive ways to do it that not only give you more, but uh, make for more prosperity. Well, you had me till the root canal. Right. All right, your <laughs> yeah. response. Then I want to ask you about the former I'm first 78. Lady. How can I not agree with Steve all the way on that? <laughs> I want my... No. But it, that's he's a problem. Right. That's why it's an entitlement, because even people who don't believe in some of these programs, you, they pay in, and they're like, I want my money. Where's yeah, well, my that's money? True. That's but that's true, but there's always this conflict of I want my money and the other people are saying I want my taxes back. I mean, it's a natural conflict in the static environment. What we have to do is change the dynamics, and the dynamics means you can cut spending and increase revenues and bring that deficit way down through economic growth. Okay. And the way you get that is a low rate, broad based, flat tax, and sound money and spending restraint. I want to, I want to bring uh, talk about everyone honoring the legacy and life of Barbara Bush. The First Lady's funeral will take place in Texas this Saturday. Some of the ex in attendees will be President Barack and Michelle Obama, President Bill and Hillary Clinton, First Lady Melania Trump. A public viewing will be held, to held tomorrow. Art, can you just share um, some of your thoughts about the former First Lady? Yeah, well, I got to know her very well when we, you know, we were running and we chose Bush as vice president, and then they joined our social set in California. She was the charmer of all charmers. I mean, there was never a more elegant, fine lady than Barbara Bush. She also had a great sense of humor. Uh, when, uh, when we had the uh, 84 convention, uh, my room was right below the Bush's room in the tower there, and I used to tease her. And it, it was, she was just a charmer all the way, and yet very serious when it, she needed to be serious. So I, I think she's the best of the best, and I can't tell you how much I admire her. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I love that joke that uh, President George W. Bush told Maria yesterday, yesterday about she looked at uh, her doctor and said, you know why George W. is the way he is? Because I smoked and drank when I was pregnant with him. That's going to go down in history, <laughs> him telling that story. So, Art, That's thank you for that. That's a great story. Thank you for the memories. Art Laffer, always a pleasure.